Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today on the bench we have a high gain 5 that's been sent in for repair by a customer so I uh, believe we have a, um, a very stiff channel change and he wants the usual performance modifications done to it and an extra band fitting as well but before we start don't forget to like share subscribe comment join the facebook group buy me a coffee join patreon have a look at my website microchips.net and let's get started so high gain 5 we all know the high gain 5 classic radio due to its p wit bleep this radio is in pretty good condition so this is actually the 2795dx the one with the coarse and fine clarifier and tune should we say instead of it just being just a basic clarifier so whipping the lid off everything looks nice inside there everything looks pretty much untouched just the way we like it if you're playing along at home 42nd week of 1980 pll very nice so we've taken the front off taking the knobs off we're going to store that away so looking on the underside somebody's put this five volt um, feed modification on a separate board now i was actually moder moderately impressed with this because it's nice nice and neat you know but we'll see why i wasn't really impressed later now the channel change was one of the main problems and you can see it just gets stiff it gets really really stiff it's even stiffer with no control knob on the outside but this is what he was complaining of so the question is has it got a bent shaft is there something fouling it inside the only way to find out is to take it out so take out the whole channel change assembly and what I've done is I've marked the side so I know which way they go on and we're just going to take the wafers off because I don't think that's going to be our problem and there's our channel change and I can feel it getting stiff in there so have we got a fault is it is it binding somewhere So I took away the ball bearing and the spring. I'm just feeling it and I can feel the actual the actual shaft itself is sticking. So is it just a case of hardened up grease? So before I strip it down any further, I'm just going to put a little squirt of WD-40 in. And immediately, as you can see, it frees it up absolutely beautifully so it was just hardened grease that was the problem so did i need to strip it down fully probably not but you know you don't know these things until you strip it down it could have been a faulty wafer or something else in there but as it just turns it's just it's just um hardened grease as you can see that's absolutely beautifully free now so i'll put the ball bearing and the spring back in yeah everything's fine so i'm just going to add a little bit of grease on there as well not that it not that it does much but we'll just add a little bit in because i'm sure that grease is quite old I'm just going to move it around onto the teeth. I have given it a little bit of a clean beforehand. And yep, yeah, there it is. Absolutely nice. Should last another 40 years, I reckon, after this. So yep, yeah, I'm just finishing off the greasing up just using some synthetic grease excellent 
feels absolutely lovely now. So we refitted the wafers back in. Because you know, if you put these wafers back in wrong, you're going to go into a whole heap of trouble. That's why I marked them up so I knew which way to put them back. So we'll just readjust the locking lugs for them. And there's our channel changed back together. Now if we had faulty digits we could take the wafers apart and clean them. So anyway, I've started a modification. We've removed the 41 to 80 whilst we're already there. Because we don't need that. And we're just going to solder this back into place. Nice to see no cut tracks around the PLL. Shame there's cut tracks in other areas so that we're going to see in a minute. Yeah, we'll just get this soldered back in. It's a little bit of a fiddle to actually get the pins aligned back up again. But a little bit of perseverance and a bit of care, they slot straight in. Very nice. So we disabled the 41 to 80, as shown before. And our channel change is acting beautifully. So we're going to do the um, ALC or AGC, I think it's ALC, and the final BIOS hasn't been done, and the RF um, pre-drive BIOS has not been done, so we're going to do those. So that should be a 33 ohm, a 15 ohm and a 5.6k I think it is. Then we set it on to transmit on SSB with no audio and set the final bias to 0.7 of a volt or as nearby doesn't have to be bang on but it's always nice to get it close so we've fitted one of my mod boards in there pill all replacement because the uh, customer wanted UK40 fitted on this as well so that means taking out the band switch so literally the 41 to 80 just needs grounding on the back of the channel switch and now these wires are for the actual band crystals so these are fed by 8 volts and there's the the three position switch out of the way and there's a four position switch fitted now I've had to cut down the actual splines on these because they're too long but nothing a small hacksaw can't sort out and this is somebody's repair of the VCO because the reactor diode has gone faulty yeah okay fair enough I suppose it works but we've replaced it with a proper voltage feed VCO and the bit I didn't like was underneath that regulator that was so neatly, neatly put it on the board. Somebody's cut the track around it. I know it's only a small cut, but it's still a cut track. We've got um, for the squelch pop as well. So we need to remove this resistor. And we need to add a wire link into place. Get rid of that annoying pop on the squelch. So that's that resistor removed. Now we're just going to go through the alignment procedure. So I'm just doing the first couple of coils, looking on the output before they go into the second mixer. So if we can't peak them up. Because these affect both RX and TX. So we're having a look at carrier balance. So this should be as 
close to flat as possible. I know it's still showing a bit of noise, but as long as you can get it as low as it possibly can be on USB and LSB, it's absolutely fine. So let's do some alignment of the frequencies. So we'll start off with low band. Okay, that's as good. Move up to mid band. Can never remember which control it is for mid band because they're actually laid out a bit strange on the board. They don't go in low, mid, high order. So there's our mid band when we finally get it into place. We will go back over it again. Just to make sure that everything is um, as it should be. There's our low mid high. Very nice. And that's our UK 40, but with no offset. But that's derived off the high crystal anyway, so there's no problem. We can use the KC shift to go down onto the offset with this one. As you can see. It will drop onto zeros as well, but we have fitted plus 10 and minus 5kc to this as well. I'm just trying to get the kc shift centered because we want it the same position across all the three bands. So yeah, we're pretty good there, we're pretty close. Not too bad at all. And you can see there's our minus 5kc, plus 5 and uh, plus 10 should we say, and minus 5kc. So let's have a look at the 10695 and 10692. Get those carriers correct. So as close as we can with the 695 doesn't have to be bang on but you know as close as we can get it there is plus or minus 20 allowed in the manual so yeah get it as close as but of course me like to get it bang on the zero let's go on to um Go on to LSB, 10692. So that's not too far out. So a little bit of back and forth with the upper side and lower side um, carriers. And we can get them, get them as they should be. Yeah, I think that's close enough. Yeah, that's close enough. There we go. That'll do nicely. And, of course, for all the Synad fanboys, let's have a look at that. So we're on minus 110, 115 dB. And it's absolutely fine. Let's have a listen in real world. So that'll be a minus 70 dB. Up to, like, 100, minus 100 pop the meter back in again and yeah I think we're up to about minus 115 there so yeah it's fine the um, receiver is working quite nicely and now we have another high game 5 that lives to see another day not too bad a condition shame about the um, paint worn off the front but you know wear and tear Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join the Facebook group, buy me a coffee, join Patreon, have a look at my website. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.